Well, welcome to J Star's Victory versus Plus, where I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks on certain characters because I played the game, I didn't record actual voices, I just recorded the game audio, and I took advice from my friend Scribbles who told me that I could narrate over the game footage. So that's what I'm going to do here. So we'll kind of give some tips, tricks on certain characters that I play as. So anyone who's fighting against me will know kind of what I'm going to do. They can fight against me like that and be like, Hey, yo, I know what you're going to do next and I'm going to kick your butt. And I'll be like, okay, you may know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you because I know everything you're going to do. Sue me, Sega! I decided to play as my main man, Luffy. I don't know who Joseph Joestar is. I believe he's from, I don't know, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It's a 1v1, no support, no teammates. Question. I didn't know what to answer, so I guessed Mexico. And that was right. So, as you can see there, if you keep pushing the button, the special button, and then you can activate gear second with Gong Gong and Gatling. But also, you can activate it by just holding R1 and then pushing X. Like that. From gear second, you can activate control shock to the top of the same way you would do uh, gear second. But also, there is another way to activate it if you hold a uh, circle with R1. It will do everything it's done. If you are already in Ushoshoku mode, then holding the special button with R1 will do Gong Gong no Red Hawk. Of course, in this stage, the reason why I actually picked Namek is because Luffy and I guess all those who do this in this game are all weak to water, just like in the anime manga. And I thought it was pretty neat that they added that in there. So when you jump into the water, as you can see, your stamina bar turns blue. And that would mean that you cannot refill your stamina gauge. If you want to refill that, you have to get out of the water. So if you run out of stamina, you can't activate gear second or do much of anything. You have to get out of the water if you want to do something good. I'm not sure if it does the same for all characters, it's just Luffy and maybe the other double group users, but I do know for sure this happens with him. And I thought it was pretty neat that they added that in there. I have no idea what the flames are, or what the little looks like a shield that appears in front of me when I'm Shoshaku on. That might be a shield, that might be like a sort of attack if you run into someone, I don't know. Bullets should not hurt him. You don't hurt him in the anime, or the manga, but that's what should they hear. He keeps blocking all my specials, and I hate that. Such a pain in the butt. Also keeps knocking me into the water, or making me follow him in, because batch like that. Oh God! Joseph Joestar, you 
deserve everything that comes your way. For any good thing. You deserve only pain. That's it. Just pain. Another event gun! I have no idea what happened there, we just like hit each other. Even though I don't think I should have just overrided whatever. Victory first. I have a preferred song because of the fact that I really need to raise up my effort gauge, which is the only gauge that I haven't maxed out yet. Grizzly Magnum was introduced during the Punk Hazard arc in the fight against Caesar Clown. See, I didn't really even have to be him. I could just do whatever I want this time, but I want to I get revenge. <laughs> Battles are decided by who has the most health or who has more of the little notches on top. And I got angry because I couldn't actually finish the match with a fair fight. It got ended by time limit. So I just said, fuck you, Capsule Corp, and I attacked the spaceship. Kilua. I'm not extremely well with Kilua, but I'm okay-ish. My opponent, I picked Sasuke, and there's a reason for that. See, the reason is, well, one, Sasuke is a ninja. They're very skilled in the art of assassination, and Kilua comes from a, fa a family of, assassina uh, of assassins and he kind of quit that whole th that whole thing, so they also have electric attacks. That's another reason why I put them against each other. Okay, so some things you want to get down about Kidoa is that he has a technique called God Speed. It has to be charged up. You'll be seeing it later on. It will. It will make you very fast, and also more powerful. I think it also completely fills up your stamina gauge. I should have taken off the little notification thingy at the top right. And his other thing is Zetsu, which is kind of an assassination mode. He will be invisible to the opposite team. You can't see him at all, only the player playing him can see him, and I guess also his team. So, your best shot at, you know, defending against that is either just attacking randomly, or waiting for it to run out, or just guarding. There's no real way to avoid that. You can knock him out of it before he actually activates it though. Oh, another thing that might be useful to mention is that if you activate Godspeed and then Zetsu, you will have Godspeed activated while you're in Zetsu. So when you come out of Zetsu, you will also be still in God Godspeed mode. So kind of useful technique right there. Amaterasu. One thing I hate about Sasuke is that, because it will hit you. I think no matter where you are, I 
think it has to be you have to be in his sights though, I'm not sure. But if it hits you, it does a bit of damage, but really fucks up your stamina gauge. And I hate that. Here I activated that too because I got sick and tired of his fucking shit, so I just wanted to. Yeah, but then I started activating Godspeed by accident. So I, I kind of fucked up. Godspeed has two things. If you cancel it in the middle, then he'll do an attack. But if you completely charge it, then he activates Godspeed mode and he can run around very fast. One thing I thought would, that would have been cool if the game designers had done is if they had allowed Kiloa to do the whole heart thing like he did in the anime spoilers shit fuck well you know what whatever you don't know what the heart thing is so now I'm gonna put in the spoiler alert spoiler 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 is the anime kind of like just ripped someone's heart out straight up and I thought that was pretty cool when it would, I thought it would have been cool if you could do that here too but I can see why they kind of left that out fucking Amaterasu here it is again called it Zit. I believe in the anime, Tetsu doesn't actually turn you invisible, it just makes you invisible to other people in the sense that like your spiritual prayer, your energy, your presence isn't really sensible. They can't really sense you, so they don't really know when you're there. I don't know if it works if you're directly in like I am, but I don't think it actually makes it invisible. You can see there, I kind of cancelled my attack early, my god speed, and it didn't attack. You activate Victory Burst as Kidua, and you actually like pull off the ultimate attack, whether it actually hits or not. You activate god speed mode anyway. Oh hi, Paul. why not just block the epic scene? speed while I activated Zetsu, so you're gonna see that what I said before was true. See, you still have God speed activated. I guess it ran out just because, like, it was its time already. I had it on too long. Time up. Kidua wins. Son Goku. There you go. There's a reason why I also did this matchup as well. See, if you have them on the same team, Goku will tell Gon that he even used to use the uh, rock, paper, scissors technique. And Gon wants to test how it goes up against his Jajankin. So I decided, hey, no, let's put this let's put his Jajankin to the test. Question What does Koro Sensei do once a month? He sheds his skin. I know 
that legitimately because I actually read the manga and watched the anime. Charge! A little thing about Gon. He can, he and Kiriba can charge up while moving and jumping around. Just to let you know. Another thing that you want to know about Gon is that forward circle will activate Ko. Otherwise known as. Well, to me, power up mode. Guard circle will activate Ken. Or super defense mode. And regular circle will activate Dejankin. In Dejankin, in Dejankin mode, you can have three different attacks. If you, well, actually, first off, I should probably state that you can move a bit. You can move forward, backward, side to side, whatever. So you can just get as close as you want to your opponent. But be careful, because one hit or a fall from a high platform will screw up your combo. Well, not your combo, your attack. In Junkin mode, you have three separate attacks. Rock, paper, and scissors. So active, after activating Jajankin, get up close and use triangle to use scissors. Get up close and use circle to do rock, which is a punch. I should also mention that scissors is a sword. And if you want, you can distance yourself and use paper, which will hit an attack. I'm sure you've already seen all three. If not, you would. Because as Gon, I tend to use those attacks a lot. So in Call mode, if you try to activate it while already in it, then you will deactivate it. And if you try to activate Ken uh, after you've already have Ken on, then you also deactivate that. I forget how if you switch one or another during the other ones that are still active, I forget what happens. I don't think they overlay, but I mean, you could try to see it yourself. If not, I mean, I'll probably make an edit later on saying something I don't know. That one was rock right there. With Gon's attack, he'll rush his opponent, knock him into the air, and ready to jump again. Here comes Rock! Rock, paper, Rock! I don't know if that's actually what he says, but in the dub that I was looking at, that's what he said. Is rock, paper, Rock. Instead of, like, paper, paper, Rock, which would make more sense to me. Mostly focus on attack power. I say screw everything else. And as you can see there, I drop from the platform, and even that small distance screwed up my Jajankin. Hmm, I believe Goku went Super Saiyan here. Yes, he did. You can see his blonde flowing locks. Not really flowing, they're just there. Also, my Ko has been deactivated.
Well, the next will be the fourth and final character that I'm going to be showing off. Oh, I think it might be worth mentioning when you fight Goku or Vegeta. Don't let them charge up their second bar, because once they do that, they activate the Super Saiyan and they become stronger and kind of more of a pain in the ass to deal with. Especially Vegeta. Psyche is one of my favorites. I'm not the best player as him, but I like him. I like psychic abilities and telekinesis and whatnot. I find them very cool. As you saw there, it told you about his R1 special, where if you push the left analog stick upwards, it will launch him up in the air. But there are other versions of that. If you push it side to either side, then it will launch him. You will launch your enemy in that direction. If you push it down, it will knock your enemy right to the ground. That's right in there with this regular circle, which does brings three rocks up, which you can shoot at your opponent, or just leave there, and once your opponent comes up to you, or you come up to your opponent, they get hit by one, which is pretty useful. Kind of like a rock defense. His regular triangle is kind of like a shield break slash launch. Really useful for distancing. Kind of miss. Is the rocks will sort of trail. I failed that special attack. You can see what that one will do later. I'll explain. My, what I tend to do is try to always bring up rocks. And um, one thing that to mention is if you have rocks on you, you won't be able to charge. So it's best if you charge up a lot before summoning them so that you can pull off some successive combos by launching your opponent and then launching rocks at them or whatever. You also get close in do the combos, but the rocks do their work there too. They can be blocked, they can also be cancelled by other attacks. I guess I'll explain what that little circle is that I'm launching does. It'll... Oh, there you go. It teleports you and your opponent. So it'll teleport your opponent to your position and you to your opponent's position. It's really kind of like, whoa, what the fuck just happened? Rocks, the most useful weapon in the game. Hey, I guess you could say that I'm a rock vendor. Huh? Hey, talk, talk, hey, hey, hey. Back kick your ass, eh? Talk. No, you be gone, but hey, talk. Go away. Launch him up in the air and launch rocks at him. I could have gotten in a third one here, but I like was thinking, well, what if he gets invincibility frame and I miss and I waste my rock? I guess it was more wise for me to hold on to it than he did pull up. He tried to pull up a combo there and he was talk blocked by my rock. Try to say that five times fast. Cock blocked by my rock. Cock blocked by my rock. Cock blocked by my rock. Cock block. Eh. Can't. Yeah. So, our Super Saiyan friends here, if their gauges run out, they revert back to normal things. Okay, so here's a little thing about Psyche's attack. You want to make sure you're a little bit distanced from your opponents.
It'll be best that way, because if you're up close, you'll see what happens in a minute. When you get up close and personal and try to do your ultimate attack at Psyche, this will happen. Hey! Yeah, take that, tree! Yeah. It's not... It's not useful up close. It's not useful at a distance. Rock! Rock! I don't think I've ever pulled off a successive R1 square though. Oh yeah, these rocks can also destroy um, props. So like if you go up to a house with these rocks, then it will destroy it. And it won't actually break your rock, it'll just break like the building or whatever. こんな意味もない変化。止めるのもめんどくさかったんだが。僕の名前はサイ。Oh That's it. See you next time.